Once again, welcome to Clinic OBE. This is series number five, uh, designing assessment. I think we have discussed a lot uh, on OBE so far uh, since the first series, talking about fundamentals of OBE. And then we talk about the learning cluster and learning domains. We've also talked about uh, how to prepare the table for and the CAP, excellence in innovation in teaching. And today, uh, another new, to and, and uh, I think it's very important topic for all of us to understand in designing our assessment. I think this is where Prof. Vincent will talk about reliability and validity of our assessment content. So without further ado, I'd like to invite uh, Prof. Vincent um, to deliver his uh, presentation. Over to you, Prof. Thank you, Dr. Amir. Uh, good morning, friends. Uh, first of all, I would, I would like to thank PPKA for giving me this opportunity to share with you uh, some, some little thing that I know about assessment. Today, uh, I'll, I'll share with you on how do we, how we assign our uh, design assessments. Okay, as you can see, I've seen uh, the basics about OBE, learning clusters, learning domains, excellence in and innovation in teaching, and also uh, documentation using table four. Uh, today, I'll zoom in on the assessment part of table four involving designing assessment. And next week, I will uh, delve more into details of designing rubrics. So this week and next week, uh, they are more or less connected. Uh, in this talk, I will cover three main areas. First, uh, principles of learning assessment, especially the area related to designing assessment. Then we will talk about taxonomies of assessment design. And finally, designing and developing assessment instruments. Okay, let's start with a, a small pretest. There are only five questions. If you're using a notebook, you can use, you can type in www.menti.com and use a code 5153402121. Or you can use the mobile phone to scan the QR code. We'll start when uh, we have enough participants. How many participants do you have now, Rustia? Uh, Dr. Amir? 30. 30, yeah. Exclu I'm sorry about this, Polo. Excluding you, me, Amir, 28. Baru 9 orang dalam game. Polo. Itu Patma sudah ikut, kah? Okay. Sedang mau ikut ni. Tapi okay. dia lepas buku soal pertama lah. Question dia tak mau masuk. Belum mula lah. Question, question 1 to 5 kena enter tadi. Hmm. Belum mula lah. Oh, belum mula. Patutlah. 
Belum mulai, belum mulai. Gak apa -apa. Sekarang baru 11 orang. Gak apa -apa, kau. Okay, we have 13 people. Maybe you can start now. Sorry, sorry, lambat. kacau ni my problem sharing screen Got to be the host first, Prof. Then you can share. I'm, I'm in as a as a ho, as a guest. Oh. Uh -huh. Prof, you're already presenting, actually. Is it, is it moving already? Yeah, no, your your status is presenting. Actually, I already I share, I stop share already. Oh, oh. I stop share already. One minute. I try to share first and then. Uh, Prop, you already make you as the host. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Uh, Still see nothing. Let me let me share first, and then and then. Oh no! I can see. I can see Danny sharing. Okay, already. I already unshared. Can you share, uh, Paul? Okay. Did you try to share. You are the co-host now, sorry, not, not host, but still you can share. I think there's a disaster there. Okay, you can see now. 
you can see now, but the, the game has gone halfway already. <laughs> no, I just show you the, I just show you the questions. I'll just show you a question because uh, the the number of clicks has gone gone in register there, so yes, the yeah, game has started. Uh, one of the question is which is the highest effective attainment. So our uh, answer should be consistent behavior. Empathy is level three. Yeah, uh, consistent behavior is at least four. Four in cognitive do effective domain. Question number two, maybe uh, now we can we can start doing now. So, yeah, your mentee account is paid one or free one. I have I can have uh, five items. Oh, we want more. <laughs> The highest attainment in psychomotor domain is origination. It's good. Next. Okay, it's very good. Uh, number, uh, considered as a model by others, this is uh, among the highest level. Okay, very good. Next. Very good. Industrial training, yes, but uh, industrial training also involves effective and cognitive domain. Uh, but lab, lab work is um, has more psychomotor domain in there. Okay, now we go back to the slides. Okay, I will start with uh, some principles of learning assessment. Most of this will be useful when we design assessment. Generally, I want to highlight five things 
five principles in assessment. Many of these we we know the terms very well, but today I I'll, I'll delve into more detail on each of the uh, principles. Uh, first is the validity, then reliability, objectivity. Uh, these top three are very important. The last, the second, the, the fourth and the fifth are, are important in in supporting assessment work, with, which is administrability and interpretability. And I'll bring in standards and guidelines related to assessment, especially those from MQA. These are the most two important documents, apart from uh, our internal document like uh, panduan, garis panduan pentaksiran, and also later late, uh, later on you have the advisory notes. But at the ministry level. The most important document is COPPA. And spe specifically into assessment, there is a guidelines to good practices assessment of students. All these documents are available at the MQA website. Okay, I, I said about five principles. First is validity. Validity is the extent to which assessment measures what it, it is designed to measure. A valid assessment concurs with the quality it is believed to assess or measure. Meaning when we want to assess something, make sure that we measure that thing only and nothing else. Example, if you are a physics lecturer, you assess physics content. Uh, one obvious violation of validity is, for example, using very difficult language in your physics test, for example. So when you use very difficult, very difficult, I mean it in English, not the technical jargons. If you use a very difficult English word, which can be replaced by any other English word, we are actually testing language, not physics. So this is example of validity violation. Second is reliability. Reliability is about assessment produces a precise and consistent measurement of learning. So the keyword here is precise and consistent. A reliable assessment provides consistent scores even when it is administered to the same students at a different time. There is a common misunderstanding on, on, on this concept of reliability. I always say that uh, validity is much more important than reliability. Reliable, reliability only means that your test is consistent, measuring the same thing again and again, but it may be measuring a wrong thing. My favorite example is, uh, let's look at a primary school class. Primary school class, you want to test them on maths operation, four plus five equals to how many? So four plus five equals to how many dash, just let them fill in the blank, four plus five equals to nine. This is much more valid compared to if you ask them what is the sum of FOUR and FIVE, because in the second case, you're also testing language. You're testing the meaning of sum, testing the meaning of FOUR, taking a, testing the meaning of FIVE. So validity is more important than reliability. Uh, next is objectivity. Objectivity is more related to assessment work uh, scoring. Objectivity is the agreement of scores between two or more assessors. If different assessors can produce the same mark on the same work, same product, then we say that your assessment is objective. An objective assessment reduces the possibility of personal bias among assessors. Uh, the last two, note that 
uh, critical compared to the first three, but it is important in support of overall assessment work, uh, which is administrability. Administrability is the extent to which assessment in instructions and procedures are clear and standardized. A well administered assessment decreases the likelihood for assessing results to, to be affected by other factors. So when we have good administrability, we are also strengthening validity. Example, if your classroom for test or exam is very comfortable, suitable temperature, for example, uh, which is good administrability, you are contributing to validity, validity as well, because for example, if the aircon is too cold, people who are stronger physically are less affected by the temperature. So good aircon temperature contribute to administrability. Bad administrability, example too cold, you're testing physical strength. You're not testing cognitive ability because people who are stronger physically are less affected by a cold temperature. So it is the supporting principle uh, which also contribute to validity. Interpretability is the extent to which assessment results are interpreted and applied correctly. In the past, we always look at test scores, results, grades, CGPA. But these days, if we are following the development, we are looking much beyond that. We are looking at, for example, uh, something equivalent to ICGPA. We are also looking at into assessment of the teaching job using PK07. So all these extra measurement uh, ways to contribute towards interpretability. With a good interpretability, we are no more focusing on results and grades for students, but we are measuring many other things which contribute to overall assessment. Next, uh, let's, let's look at the standards on assessment under COPA. COPA is under the area number two. 2.11, it says, Assessment principles, methods, and practices must be aligned to the learning outcomes of the program, inconsistent with the levels defined in the MQF. So this, as we know, I think uh, yeah, this has to be mentioned again and again. This is about constructive alignment. 2.1.2, the alignment between assessment and learning outcomes in the program must be systematically and regularly reviewed to ensure its effectiveness. So we have to review our assessment outcomes and learning outcomes regularly. Under methods, there must be a variety of methods and tools. We have moved away from tests and exam for quite some time. I think most of us are doing more and more non-test measurement, which is good. 2.2.2, there must be a mechanism to ensure periodical review, validity, reliability, integrity, currency, and fairness of assessment methods. So this is very important, especially uh, related to the topic today. The frequency methods and criteria of student assessment, including the grading system and applied uh, appeal policies must be documented. This is about administrability and interpretability. Changes to student assessment methods must follow established procedures and regulation and must be communicated to students. So each of these standards I have put at the right hand side, the principles involved. And you can see that most of the principles are related to validity and reliability. The third area under assessment is on the management of student assessment. 
So since this is about management, if you can see that most of them are related to administrability. With number four, number four, the, the department, the department can be the faculty or the program must have appropriate guidelines and mechanism for students to appeal their course results. This is also related to validity because it, when the assessment is valid, there's less, less chance of appeal. The last one, department must periodically review the management of student assessment and act on the findings of the review. This involves all the five principles. Okay, the second area is about domain of learning assessment. There are a lot of confusion, especially those related to non-cognitive domain. So let's look into detail. Three domains, I think all of us are very familiar with this, cognitive, psychomotor, affective, and constructive alignment. You have been drummed on this again and again. The three components must align learning outcomes, teaching and learning activities, and assessment tasks. And I believe this has been also spoken to, you have been spoken to on this again, again and again. We have to be very sure of which domain we are, we are going to assess. That's why it's very important to, to uh, be very clear about the domains, the boundary of the domains that you are assessing on. Okay, let's look at the first domain, cognitive domain. Cognitive domain is about thinking and intellectual skills, deals with how students acquire, processes, utilizes, and create knowledge. So this is about knowledge and about processing of knowledge. Attainment of cognitive domains can be measured based on Bloom's revised taxonomy. The six levels you are very familiar now. Uh, there are many examples of cognitive processes and action verbs in the guideline, guidelines for good practices for assessment. Uh, among the methods you can use in measuring cognitive domain are uh, quiz, test, assignment, and reports. The six levels in cognitive domain. The boundaries are very clear. Example, remember. Remember is just factual recall. Just hafa bulat bulat. Understand, explain ideas or concepts. So it's not just bulat bulat, but we have to explain. When we explain, we make it into a longer form, we make it into shorter form. So there is a modification of the format of knowledge compared to level one. Level three apply, use information in situations. I always emphasize that in level three, when you apply, there must be two things that you can point out in your, in your question or in your task. Apply what? Apply something abstract into something concrete. So when you do something application, there must be something concrete, there must be something abstract. The abstract thing is the theory, law, regulation, rules, formula, guidelines. And what is concrete? Concrete is situation. Example, applying Newton's law onto a situation, situation when the durian drops from the tree to the ground. So durian dropping from the tree to the ground is the concrete part. The abstract part is gravitational law, or which is the or Newton's law. So you must have these two things in your level three assessment whether it is a question, exam, or 
assignment. Analyze draw connections among ideas. Among ideas means you have many topics. Various scope. Making students, asking students to connect the, the two scopes. Example, example, finding differences, finding similarities. Evaluate is to justify a stand or a decision. So the, the candidate needs to decide. Make need to make a stand and need to justify that using theories and knowledge that we have taught them. It's valid. Create is to produce new and original work. Work here means conceptual work. New argument, new theory, new de design, new essay, new story, new proposal. So the boundaries are very clear. The second domain is effective domain. Effective domain concerns the development in values, feelings, emotional areas, attitudes, motivation, etc. Ranges from recognition to characterization of the values. Uh, these are under the second sentence is about the level recognition, the lowest level to characterization, the highest level. Attainment of effective domain can be measured using Craig Wolf taxonomy. Uh, we'll talk about this level in the next slide. Uh, there are many examples in the guideline of good practices for assessment published by MQA. The Attainment of this can be done through observation and interviews. These are the five levels in effective domain. The most easy domain, uh, most easy level is called receiving or attending. Receiving means the students acknowledges that value. Student acknowledges that this value is important. For example, a student says, I want to work hard. I want to be responsible. I want to be a good engineer. I want to serve people as a doctor. So receiving is just acknowledging that value. Well, it can be just a promise. Moving up, we have responding level two. Responding is about action, participate, volunteers, satisfaction in participation. So the boundary is again very clear. Level one is just talking, level two is talking and doing. Level three is valuing. Uh, valuing in the pretest, there's one item on empathy. Empathy is valuing because in at this level, the student is able to put value onto something. The student is going to say that this value is good. This is a good, good practice. Uh, this is a good example to follow. It's undervaluing. Able to value a phenomena or a person outside him. Organization, something more consistent. Values become systematic can compare and contrast value, can prioritize, can commit to values. And the highest is characterization. The value has become the character of the person. So when it comes to characterization, there's no compromise. The value is always being practiced. Sakumoto. Uh, Sakumoto may not be relevant to many of the courses. Uh, in some courses, of course, like uh, physical education, sports science, uh, some courses in medicine, nursing, 
uh, some courses in uh, Sydney, maybe uh, uh, those involving dancers, singing, performance, uh, this maybe there is more psychomotor. Uh, there is also maybe a lot of psychomotor in co curriculum activities. Uh, in most courses, may not be relevant to us. Psychomotor domains, which is about manipulative, is about manipulative or physical skills, focuses on performing sequences of motor activities. Motor activities means activities involving move, movement. Do you hear some noise outside? Is it noisy outside? No, no, no. It's okay. Oh, good, good. The Potong Rupert people decided to come today. Okay. So, uh, attainment of psychomotor domain can be measured by using Simpson's taxonomy. And the levels, there are seven of them, uh, will, be, will be in the next slide. <laughs> Examples of the domain and the action verb, you can find it from the GGP assessment. Uh, how do you measure? It can be done using during demonstration, simulation, and doing video recording of it. Maybe also with the help of some checklist or observation. These are the seven levels. The lowest level is called perception. Perception means ability to use sensory cues to guide motor activities. Using one of our senses to guide motor activity. Example, hearing something, then we do the next, the next thing. Example, um, in athletics, uh, hearing the gunshot, or looking at the smoke, we start running. This is perception. Able to use our one of our senses to move to start an, a motor activity. Next level is set. Set is about readiness. There are three sets. Three types of sets: mental set, physical set, emotional set. Mental set means mentally ready, emotional set, emotionally ready. Emotionally ready means brave enough to do. And physical set means our body is ready. Example, warm up enough, uh, no injury, and so on. Okay, next is uh, response. Uh, most books use guided response. Guided response means students are able to perform with a guide. The guide can be demonstration, can be a set of procedures, set of steps, can be a recipe, can be a, another demonstration through video. So when the students can follow step by step using guide, this is level three. Mechanism, the movement becomes habitual, meaning without the need of uh, people demonstrating, things can be done automatically without help. Complex overt response. Complex means many things, a few things at the same time. More, more than two movements at the same time, overt means something that can be observed. So this is a combination of a few movements at the same time. Adaptation. Students are able to modify when the situation changes. Example, you teach them using your normal lab equipment in your lab. Uh, suddenly, the equipment doesn't work. So you borrow the set from another lab, which is uh, different from your, your, your common e equipment. If the students can still perform using the new equipment, 
Uh, this is a uh, adaptation. And the highest is origination. Origination is about creating new movement. In our university, in universities, I think it should be quite safe to go up to level four. Beyond level four, I think it's quite difficult, no? quite difficult, especially six and seven is very, very, very difficult. So if you are talking about typical attainment, you should go for level four. How do I get this out, get out of, of here? Kachow, kachow, kachow. How do I get out of here? Dennis, how long? How to get out here? Prof. I don't know what happened now. I my eraser is stuck there. I cannot get out. <laughs> I okay. I okay. I stop sharing and continue. Yeah, stop sharing dulu. Okay, Lamat. Okay, I believe that you are very familiar with these five clusters now. Uh, we will skip this slide. Okay, these five clusters all together, if we break it, break it down, there are 11 outcomes. 11 domains from the five clusters. And each of these domain can be mapped to uh, either cognitive, affective, or psychomotor. Example, knowledge and understanding, we can map it to cognitive. Cognitive skills is definitely cognitive. There's no affective, no psychomotor for the first two. Interpersonal. Is effect in effective domain. Personal skill is in effective domain. Practical skills. Uh, this is a bit tricky. Most practical skills are under psychomotor. Some practical skills can be cognitive. Especially if we use a term technical skill. So this depends on, on your discipline. 
it's most of the time psychomotor, but it may be, may be cognitive. Ethics and professionalism is uh, most people will put this under effective, but there's a cognitive domain inside because you have to know what is allowed, what is not allowed. Knowing, knowing what's, what is allowed, what is not allowed, what is uh, recognized by the profession, what is not is a low level of cognitive domain. Communication skills, many people will like to associate this with effective domain, but there is also a cognitive domain inside. Again, depending on the task you give them. If the task that you give them is highly loaded with knowledge, highly loaded with scientific principles, or whatever your trust program, it, it can be cognitive. So when you measure, it's good that you also consider a cognitive domain apart from effective domain. Digital skills is cognitive and effective. I will say more into cognitive. Numerous skill, numeracy skill, standard cognitive domain. Leadership, autonomy, responsibility. Cognitive can also be effective. Entrepreneurial skill, cognitive and effective. So you can see that these domains are in everywhere in our uh, learning outcomes. When you are when you have stated your learning outcomes, you must first be very certain whether it is cognitive, effective, or psychomotor before you can bring in the taxonomies and the, the levels. So with your knowledge, when you are very, very certain that uh, you are measuring cognitive or effective or psychomotor or combination of two of them, then, you, then only you can go into designing and developing. Uh, designing and developing basically in your table four, they are under these two, uh, this slide or this worksheet, assessment method and task. I want to highlight the differences between method and task. Uh, this is an example given by University of Reading. Differentiating methods, tasks, and tools. When you talk about method, you should be talking about things like case study, concept map, basic lab report, multiple choice question, open book exam, oral presentation, and so on. Then the task is the work of doing, work of delivering, or work of performing the method. Example for case study. Case study, the task is work through a case study to identify problems and to offer potential solutions. So task is about what the students are doing through the assessment method. And as for assessment tool, you can use a rubric to measure the ability to work through the case study. Concept map, if you are using concept map as a method, then the, the students task to be map up students' understanding of concepts and you can use these tools. Essay, the task is to write an essay on specific topic with the involvement of literature sources and you can use rubric as a tool. Lab report, multiple choice, open book, oral presentation. So, and you can see that most of the tools uh, involve uh, rubric. This is an example of uh, methods that you can use according to the domain involved. If your assessment is just cognitive alone, these are the, the possible methods, test, quiz, essays, verbal test, exam, project paper. If it is just psychomotor alone, you can use hands-on lab work demonstration. Uh, if it's an effective domain alone, you can use portfolio, survey, rating skill, <laughs> self-report journal. 
and most of the time some of those are learning domains the clusters involve more than one domain so you may have to use some specific method for example um, if you are measuring lab work lab work involves two things the work itself and the report when you are measuring lab report maybe lab uh, you, lab report involves cognitive and psychomotor because the psychomotor part is a skill involved uh, cognitive part is about making conclusion making inference and so on so lab report can be used for uh, assessment when cognitive is involved and also psychomotor is involved uh, and, and one example of uh, overlapping is uh, audition if your assessment your your work involves audition it will involve cognitive domain because you need to people need to uh, know content in audition and also they have to show values in audition so audition is one example involving cognitive and effective domain observation is one example involving effective and psychomotor domain and if you have something you can also have something involving all the three domains example stage performance involving cognitive effective and psychomotor when we construct instruments basically there are three phases that we have to go through the first phase is planning and design once planning and design is done we go to instrument de development and after the instrument is developed before you can use it you need to do vetting which is a validation okay the first phase planning oh. and design yes sorry prof uh yes the previous slide just now yeah talking about okay um audition and stage performance yeah uh isn't audition part of uh assessing psychomotor prof what was the difference between audition and stage performance audition can be uh some like singing some singing may not be you may not involve uh, psychomotor um stage performance uh, psychomotor is very clear because you have to have body movement uh, body language and so on audition can be something uh, through a recording for example I don't know maybe the do we have any sunny people here maybe you can differentiate yeah, yeah I agree also like when involved yeah. recording and so it doesn't match on on the physical part because psychomotor is yeah. more on physical right physical movement. yes yes which one stage performance huh? stage performance it definitely involved three yeah yeah but audition uh maybe uh, audition can be done by sitting on a chair and sing a song record it send to somebody so you can send a video you can send a video recording for audition so in that case in that case you can by listening to the song uh you can gauge the the feeling the effective domain you can also see uh how well this this guy understand the meaning meaning of the song okay bro. this is my view la. can be can be wrong uh maybe subject to uh people Sunni people's uh, very verification still, still depend on the situation I think yeah depending on depending on the situation that's my perception and audition uh, uh, even like the lab report it can it yeah. can also include effective it depends on what we we yes said. yes yes if you really want to uh, look at how committed is a person in doing science science lab uh, science work lab work then you can bring in also effective domain. So these are just examples. The boundaries can shift around. 
Thanks, uh, Dr. Amir. Okay, bro. Thank you. Okay. So when we plan the first phase, plan and design, you have to consider uh, these elements. Uh, first, make sure that we, we do alignment with the learning outcomes. We align with the content and also learning activities. Uh, basically, this is constructive alignment. Consider student learning time uh, with the new, uh, the way we do table four now, automated, this, this issue is less now because uh, some of these are computed by, um, by uh, worksheets. Consider the learning outcome domain, make sure that the right domain is being uh, used. Consider the level of attainment, whether you want uh, level two, level three, and so on. Need to consider the product. Before we see the product, we have to, to visualize what product will come up from this assessment. Example of product, maybe a test blueprint for cognitive assessment, maybe an assessment plan for effective and psychomotor domains. The second phase, development of instrument, we have to consider context, context of student, look at the assessment, whether it is about group work, pair work, or individual work. Uh, usually for cognitive domain, there's more work. For effective and psycho domain, maybe there's more work group work, also depending on context. They can also be individual in the psychomotor domain. Next, you have considered tasks to be performed during assessment. Example of task, if you are using a test, you will be, uh, be answering questions. Um, other tasks, maybe perform inquiries, write reports. Remember the last column in your mm -hmm. table three, there's one on task. So this is what the students do. Also need to consider evidence of attainment. Example evidence, ability to answer. Matching with the marking scheme, for example. Ability to write can be measured using a rubric and so on. Ability to produce, produce something and change in behavior. So this, all this can go together with rubrics. And then we have to look at criteria and standard for judging attainment. Criteria are the breakdowns. Standards are the description for each of the breakdowns. Example, we have standards for one to two marks, standard for three to four marks, standard for five to six marks. So all this has to be very clear. Uh, if you can, you can use in criteria and standard, you can involve, get involved for marking scheme, assessment rubric, and checklist. We will go into more detail of this next week. Uh, the last phase is vetting instrument. Instrument needs need to be vetted by a panel of to ensure validity. Uh, usually in, in our faculty, we can have it in our uh, program meeting, or we can have it, even have it pre-program meeting involving smaller groups. We have to bring in content validity and phase validity. Okay. Content validity is about testing, measuring the right content. Uh, this will need experts in the same area to make sure that we are measuring the right content. Face validity, experts may, may not be needed. Uh, colleagues in other area may help can help us to do face validity. Face validity is about the appearance. For example, uh, make sure that we use the right font, right format. Uh, no spelling error, correcting correction of languages. So this can be under face validity. And also checking, checking uh, alignment with the uh, GSU. And for vetting, suggestions for improvement by the panel need to be incorporated in the revised instrument. So there's a reason for vetting. After the vetting, we should revise. 
the instrument, if there are some suggestions to improve our instrument. Example of instruction, uh, instrument construction for academic writing. These are the three phases, planning and design. In planning and design, we identify learning outcomes. We build assessment specification tables, considering the student's learning time and the level of outcomes. Uh, example of product is assessment specific table or test specific table or JSU. Second phase instrument development. We describe the details of exception, exception task based on the test blueprint or assessment blueprint. Example, assessment objective task to be taken by students, the content, the size of writing a written product. Then we build rubric for assessment. Example, we can bring involve a marking scheme and standards. For uh, the product of instrument development is description of students' task for uh, description of assessment task for students. And the last phase vetting, vetting of assessment specific table, assessment task, and marking rubric by a panel. Revision of rubrics or tasks based on feedback. So the product is a is a validation form and it's a revised revised list of tasks and rubrics. There are many examples of assessment uh, methods in many documents. For example, for cognitive domain. In involving problem solving scientific skills. Uh, there's MOH2016. This is a Garis Panduan ICGPA. There are some examples there. Example of values and at attitudes, ethics and professionalism under effective domain. Also, you can find some example in your uh, Garis Panduan ICGPA. Uh, there are many uh, many others in uh, websites. This is just one example. This uh, Ruby star is something like a wiki form. So you have to you have to consider very carefully. There are many examples you can download. You can make modification, but don't don't take it and use it immediately. We need need to uh, judge on the quality and just on the relevance to, to our students' work. Common issues in assessment design, based on my experience in the university. Uh, the most common issue is mis mismatch of learning domains. Uh, some uh, Especially a lot in should be incognitive by sport and not effective and psychomotor. Now, uh, this also relates to the second issue overemphasis on cognitive and psychomotor domains and their levels. Uh, there are quite a lot of uh, assessment tasks which should be under cognitive, but they are put under effective domain, psychomotor domain. Maybe those days uh, when we distribute the domains, we were not very clear about uh, whether it's cognitive or psychomotor or effective. Now, I think our people in university, we are much better now in terms of knowledge on these three domains. So I think it's good to revise again and make sure that we measure the right domain. Another thing is uh, levels. Um, people people like to go for high level. Example, psychomotor go for level six, level seven. It's very difficult. Level six, level seven is like committing suicide because only very few people can do that. So if you need to go for psychomotor domain, go for the the reasonable ones like level four. 
even level five is okay. Uh, also, for effective domain, level five is very difficult. Characterization is very difficult. Characterization may not happen in four years. It will happen through, throughout the whole lifetime. So I think it's safer to go for, if you want to go for high level in effective domain, maybe go for level four for effective domain. Our next issue is uh, recycling or modification of used test items. When you use past year paper, questions from past year paper, uh, the danger is when the people have, students have seen that paper before, seen that exam test item before, but no more testing that level. Maybe the first round when you use it is level five or level six. But if this, this paper appears in library, in published books, or, or people share it with their juniors. When when this question comes out again, you are no more measuring level five or level six. You are only measuring level one because if they have tried it, or if even if they have put some thoughts into it, you are you are measuring level two. So when we want to recycle or modify used items, it's best to uh, make sure that these papers are not very open not in open domain. Maybe you can classify it as a closed item. So you can re recycle in maybe after two, four, four years, five years with some modification, that's, that's okay. When the questions become too open, we are no more testing that level four, level five, level six. We are testing the ability to remember the answer, which is a level one and level two. And because of this, we have we we are actually contributing to, to great inflation. Yeah, people becomes easier for people to get grade A, grade B, thinking that we are measuring high high levels. We are actually not because of recycling and modification. It's very obvious now in SPM result these days. In SPM these days, it's so easy to get uh, ten A's. My A's. Students think that, or, or, or teachers think that we are measuring high levels uh, using uh, SPM paper, for example. But if these papers, if these questions are not, not really original, if they are modified from somewhere, although the question claim to be measuring level five, level six, we are actually measuring level one, level two. When the students have tried, they have seen similar papers, similar questions, and they have more or less figured out how to answer it. So we're actually measuring level one, level two. Our next issue is a lack of documentation in changes in assessment tools. Uh, it's very clear in the uh, COPPA document. Every document, every change must be documented and must be uh, acknowledged in a committee. So when we make changes, make sure that these changes are documented. Lack of validation of non-test assessment tools. Uh, this problem uh, was quite bad in the past. I think we are we are re reducing this problem now. In the past, when we validate, when we vet questions, we are focusing too much on test items, exam questions. These days, I see more more validation on non-test assessment tools, which is good. So we should go for 100% um, of this, not just focusing too much on test papers when it comes to uh, vetting or verification or validation of assessment tools. Next issue is lack of contextualization to workplace or real or authentic situation. Uh, some, especially in tests, in tests, uh, try not to make the test paper too uh, abstract, too, too 
academic, so-called academic, try and relate the question to workplace, to authentic situation. Same thing when we do, when we give assignments, make sure the assignment is real if, you, if possible. If not real, make it as real as possible. Give a scenario which is very real. And uh, next issue is uh, rubrics. Some, some rubrics are too generic. Rubrics must be specific to the content if possible. So if your rubric is, uh, for example, too generic, the rubric that can be used in science, in physics, in maths, in history, in music, and something is wrong with the rubric. A rubric must be specific to the content. Okay, I believe this is uh, that's all I, that's, uh, I can share with you this morning. And I'd like to thank MQA for all those documents, JPT, uh, for some of the uh, books and guidelines, PPK, for still supporting my work. Dr. Vera, FPP, she helped me to uh, make the slide in better format. Thanks. I'll be happy to answer any question or if there's any clinic, uh, I'll be happy to help you. Uh, Dr. Dennis, in the past, how do you do clinic? Clinic, any mystery, doctor, any mystery, any mystery, any mystery? Oh, excuse me. Ah. <coughs> now, do you ah. think that uh, we are placing an overemphasis on the psychomotor domain when it comes to academic courses? Yes, yes. That's why I have, I have, I have put I have put there in the, as, one, as one of the issues. Uh -huh. uh, most of our courses, most of our courses will not, will do not involve psychomotor. Yeah, I agree with you. That, that, that's why when you say when you say that uh, lab work can be considered as psychomotor, unless they are handling uh, advanced machines, then we can consider uh, yes. consider as psychomotor yes. skills. Uh. Yeah. Why do we do lab work? Because we want to uh, examine something. We want to make uh, find some findings from the lab, lab work. So it's a uh, more cognitive. Cognitive, because we're not. Yeah, because we have to. Yeah, we have to get conclusion from it. <laughs> we are not evaluating so it, how he holds the yeah. test tube. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, if you are if you are training science teachers, maybe that part is slightly important, uh, but still not not it shouldn't ever overshadow the cognitive domain. Yep. Thanks for the comment. Thanks. Thanks, bro. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Dennis, how, in the past few series, how do you do the clinic? Atau Dr. Amir, in the past, macam mana clinic they buat? Alam alam apa itu? <laughs> apa itu? A -a apa soalan yang ditanya tadi? <laughs> Oh. No, this this series about uh, this series is clinic clinic OBE kan. Uh. So clinic bila kita buat clinic mesti ada orang oh, ada isu kan dia bawa bawa dia punya uh, tools di sini so we examine we help we give advice. Uh, ada tak duit? Boleh juga. Uh, we, ada tak? Anybody want to share? Uh, anyone yang mau share boleh? Yeah. Uh. Anybody? Brave enough to share your instrument? Dr. Patma to angkat tangan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, can, can later by because I'm working on using my tablet. Yeah, get it from my okay. laptop. Good. 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 If I can add, uh, Prof. Yeah. Um, actually, initially we have planned to do it both physical and online. Yeah, yes, yes. The, the first series. Uh, not uh, there were no people attended the physical one because physical one the, the aim because of clinic kan? so the aim is ah, yeah. to only guide lecturers lah to have ah, yeah, yeah. OBE yeah. Semua from series one yes. to series six. But fortunately, yeah. many prefer to join online. But if anyone of us here have anything to share or ask, then we can we can guide lah 
with with yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah okay okay good good Uh, Panma, you're sharing kan? Eh, uh, one, one, one minute, bro. Okay. Just one minute. Uh, Prof. Yeah. The intention is after we complete this OBE, we mm. might uh, assess all our UMS lecturers in terms of their competency on OBE lah. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Maybe, yeah, maybe like go go for road show, go faculty by faculty, maybe easier. Mm. But bro, mine, see, is, is, mine is an uh, assignment, uh, Prof. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, boleh. Uh, anybody else who are waiting for Dr. Padma or any question? Okay, I need to share. I need to be. I need to be a co-host. Yes. Siapa boleh tolong? Yep, um, tengah setting. Okay. Can share your screen now. Share screen, yep. Anyone can share to Dr. Patma. Yeah. Anyone oh. can share. Ah, okay. Fine. Is that one? Right. Um, this is for the research methods course. This is the second okay. assignment. The first assignment they become they come about the research met the what literature metrics. Then from mm -hmm. there they choose five articles and do a critical review. Hmm. Is okay, bro? The bargain arm, huh? bargain arm, what do you look at? Okay. 35%. Uh, the one, the one they have got, this is where they come up with their opinion. They review. Oh. Oh. So maybe they connect with uh, what they call that, uh, mm. other uh, articles. Mm -hmm. So this is a uh, solely cognitive lagan? Yeah, cognitive. Okay, that's good. Cognitive. Um, do you have a rubric to 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 break down on the, for example, bargain arm thirty five bucks? How do you distribute that? I've um, got that, but I'm seeing, once again, you got to wait for me. You got to be patient. <laughs> okay, okay. Doctor Patma. Yeah, saya. How do you align rujukan to your CLO? Ah uh, yeah. And format. Hmm. Because it is an academic writing. Can these are components of academic writing, ba? Yeah, but it doesn't align with your CLO, does it? No, specifically, I will not study it as a CLO. La. If you're going uh, to say specifically, don't you think we'll have a long list of CLO? La? When you say academic okay. writing, these are the characteristics that it must have. Probably 10% okay, not 10% I think should be okay. Yeah, but for, like for me, 12 minutes, uh, last time I do uh. the same thing, like with Jokan, for me, I give marks uh, later on. Uh. I, Scrap it, scrap it off because I, I, can, I cannot align it to the CLO. Yeah, yeah, strictly speaking, no. But uh, if you want to, like, if this is a, 
uh, some kind of continuous assessment you want to you want to train them on that uh secret okay okay lah it's a total of 10 percent kan yeah okay lah because bro you see okay then if, if you see what you call that the our current students kind of at the master's level also mm. the in-text citation is out their yeah. Uh, yeah. their reference list is out yeah and i got some china students phd still doing the same mm. mistakes you see you know yeah uh -huh. Considering this is a continuous assessment, you want them to do better in future um, yes. in other courses. Yeah, I think okay. But uh, not too much, 10%, I think okay. I mean, probably come up with the, what do you call? Uh, rubric. Rubric. Can you see the rubrics, bro? Belum lagi. Saya saya kata share screen pada dia. Okay. Yeah, yes. Um, um, technically, susah sikit dah, because you, like, your first row ah, pengenalan, uh -huh. pengenalan uh, 10%, so, uh, okay, 0 to 10 is, uh, is covered lah, kaedah hmm. pun okay, dapatan pun okay, perbincangan pun okay, but this one 30% punya, I think you, you either you give a new mark range, mm -hmm. or you multiply by a factor of 3.0 lah, so that, Example critical uh critical am kan nah tadi persen tapi tapi tadi ada tadi five persen tadi five persen tadi ah, kena amen lah bos kena amen kena ah. amen I need to amen okay. nak rujukan asal masih reduce sama okay let's say thirty ya mm -hmm. now your mark range for lemah is ah uh, is zero to nine already yes unless you 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 take, add a column add a column after the uh, factor mm -hmm. the factor is three okay so your mark is will be the the, the score based on the based on the standard that you put in your columns in the, in your cell mm -hmm. multiply by three multiply by three ah tambah lah tambah satu column uh, factor ah uh -huh, factor ah so that every uh, yeah, every yeah. Standard in in the cell can be used. Mm -hmm. Okay. Same thing for format 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 the factor will be zero point five. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. I right, thank you. Good. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. All right. Can okay, stop sharing. How do I stop sharing? Already stop already. Eh? Stop already. Hey, belum, 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 belum. Okay, do we have anybody who wants to share? Or any question? Selamat pagi. Pagi. Saya daripada FPL. Dan tadi saya tengok aerobics tu. Rubik's tu nak dapat dari mana dia punya rujukan dia? Sebab saya pencara baru. Saya tak saya tak, saya, saya tak pernah nampak benda tu. Rubik untuk siapa? Dari Dr. Dr. Pama ke? Dari, dari, ah, dari mana? Yang Yang baru tadi. Tentu, 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 tentu. Oh, itu sendiri punya? Oh, uh, sendiri punya ya? Ya, ya. Every rubric should be specific to your to your course and to your assignment and to the job. Any, any example? Any example ke? Example banyak kan tadi dalam uh, ada banyak contoh di 
uh, guidelines for assessment. I see. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, if you need an example, just email me. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, okay, th okay th thank you, Prof. Okay. okay. Tapi perlu modify lah. Perlu adapt untuk kegunaan masing-masing. Mm -mm -mm. Yep, yep, thank you. Thank you. Ada lagi? Dr. Siti Suriza, I think if you, one of the uh, apa ni, example for rubric nanti, can refer to ICGPE punya template juga. Ada banyak. Uh, yeah, many, yeah, banyak, the, banyak di sana. Uh, communication, everything lah. Maybe I can share that yeah. one with you as well. Yeah. Banyak di buku panduan ICGPA. I, I, ICGP ICGPA. Or I, oh, I, ICGPA. Yeah. Okay, right. ICGPA. Okay, do you have any more questions? Or, yeah, I think Dr. Uh, Dr. Samista. Yeah, hi, morning, Prof. Uh, hi, hi, good morning. Uh, uh, good morning. I just uh, mau tanya yang tadi, yang the rubric uh, show tadi itu kan, saya keluar sekejap kalau tadi minta maaf. Uh, ada yang uh, rubrik tadi itu, uh, just want to confirm, yang lemah tuh kosong hingga tiga, sederhana empat hingga enam, cemerlang uh, seven to ten tadi tuh kan, Prof? Ya. Yeah. Uh, yang uh, Dr. Patma tunjuk tadi tuh. But, uh, saya rasa okay. dulu kami pernah kena komen, if we already give the the rubrik lemah, sederhana, cemerlang, uh, for each yang kategori lemah tuh dia uh, shouldn't be in a range, because it's already lemah kan, so mesti menggambarkan, macam kami pernah di komen yang yang begitulah mm -hmm. uh, how we differentiate uh, 0 to 3 itu sedangkan dia sudah dalam kategori yang yang sama kan, uh, just need your mm -hmm. opinion Prof, thank you okay. okay, one way to avoid this is um, don't make it 100% thing because now the uh, uh, your total mark is 100%. Total mark 100%, so you can bagikan kepada every description for one mark, two mark, three mark, itu banyak kerja lah kan. If your breakdown is up to 10 marks, you have you need 11 descriptions, 0 to 10. So, uh, to avoid that, use your maximum mark in that assessment component. Contoh tadi penulisan, penulisan it, uh, review ah. Eh? If this is a, a 20% out of, out of the overall assessment plan, then make 20% as a full mark. Then you bagi bagikan kepada element, bagi kepada criteria, sudah kurang kan? Let's say oh, this is a 20 mark punya total. You you have four, four criteria. So, under four criteria, you need only to have five description, one to five. Because five times four is twenty. You you get me, guys? Ah, yeah, Prof. Maksudnya you get me. Yeah, I'm. Jangan gunakan surat. Yeah, use the use the mark mark allocation as the maximum mark. Then it's easier for you to to divide. Ah, okay. Maksudnya setiap markah tu we ah we divide ah equally ah. For the uh, range of the whole uh, rubric tadi lah. Uh, not, not really equally lah. They also depend on the weight lah. Some, some, some yeah area may yeah be more yeah important. Uh, we, we refer to the, yeah. to the weight lah. Multiply by, by, multiply by a factor lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we put the weight. Uh, example of this. Yeah. Macam this literature review uh, components is just 20%. Use 20% as a maximum. So 20%, if you divide into five, five criteria, you only need to have four description eh? one two three four because four four times five is twenty already four description for every criteria kalau mau sama um, sama rata kan tapi kalau you mau uh, gunakan weight still the, the number of description is not so much the the idea is to reduce the use of judgment 
because to just one two three is another long story kan to just seven eight nine ten only eight nine ten uh, is another story you have to think to think to another thing to justify so to reduce that use um, the maximum mark for that component as the maximum mark of this rubric okay or any uh, other friends you have any comment any uh, solution uh, dr bama what if i put it at 100 because it's easier to calculate then i calculate, oh, yeah of course uh, then i convert it of to 20 percent nah. so it convert yeah, 20%, nah. the oh, weightage yeah. for each component is already yeah. distributed as uh plan but yeah lah, tapi tapi doctor ram tamisa punya argument yeah, lah, to justify to make judgment again on what it, whether it's zero one or two or three gun well, that is a, you, but that is an oxymoron. Uh. You want to evaluate people, then you feel you're being judgmental. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah. evaluating is being judgmental, uh. not in the in yeah. not in the what do you call that in the social context, but in evaluation yeah. context, you're judging how good the work is. Yeah, la. Huh? Mm. Yes, actually, it's a it's a way of playing with number, la. I But think. if you want to avoid the issue. Uh -huh. Want to avoid the issue? Uh, use a smaller maximum so that you can have a description for every mark. Uh -huh. <laughs> that is to avoid that. Uh, avoid that question. <laughs> That's verbal gymnastics, boss. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else comment? Or anybody else want to share your project? <laughs> Or your assessment assessment plan. Jump the other one. I was waiting for uh, anybody to raise a hand. Uh, I want to emphasize again. Uh, make sure, make sure that you you measure the right domain. Cognitive, affective, psychomotor. Most of the assessment fall under cognitive domain. If if you mark under cognitive, uh, mark under affective or psychomotor, you you should be able to justify. Otherwise, the default should be a cognitive domain. Effective domain and psychomotor domain can be covered under uh, courses like some courses in co-curriculum and some courses in uh, trust university. Sports science as well, boss. <laughs> we got our practical. Uh, sports, <laughs> sports science, of course, a lot. Yeah. Sports science, uh, uh, physical education, a lot. Yeah. Yes. But there also we will not get students who reach the highest level of origination. It's more of yeah. uh, what do you call that? Uh, adaptability. Yeah. Demonstrating only. And also depending depend a lot on the qualification level. Lower lower qualification level, for example, a certificate level, mark uh, di diploma level can have more psychomotor. PhD level, level six, level eight, should be solely cognitive. Mm -hmm. But like because the low levels like CGL, CGL Kamaran or CGL, these are the qualifications to train people to do. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a certificate in uh, air conditioning, certificate in uh, computer repair, certificate in uh, cooking, Paste, pastry, baking. Uh, this is psychomotor certificate level, maybe diploma level. But you are, we are doing a PhD in baking or PhD in uh, pastry. Ga. It should be cognitive. Bro, but the just, higher the level, the you should go move towards cognitive. And just for the sake of discussion, it's just not baking, yeah. baking or cooking. Mm. But it is still cognitive yeah. even at certificate level. You go to learn to use the ingredients, but stirring the pot 
Oh, yes, yes. Uh, steering, yes. steering yes. the port is not actually yeah. what we call a psychomotor yes. skill. Yeah. Uh -huh. Deciding, it is deciding on what ingredient to use, how to mix them, uh -huh. what are the all these are cognitive. Uh -huh. But I think like, for the, yeah, it depends on the field of study. La. If you're talking about yeah. cooking, if you're talking about dance or he, any human mm. movement, and then we can emphasize on psychomoto. But yeah. uh, even at the certificate level. Yeah. Yes. So, Agnes, you can't tangan saja. Siapa? Ada lagi yang tangan? Tiada. Ah. Oh. Yes. Uh, yeah, Doctor. Hey, Prof. Okay. I'm Dayang from FPL. I'm wonder. Uh, can we use one only domain cognitive? Uh, for one course. For one course. Uh, let's say we putting the cognitive only. Uh, for three CLOs, is it possible? Or we need to use uh at least two domain. My course. I only use cognitive domain, so it depends on the nature of the course. What course do you teach? This one is a new um, course, and then uh, in this course, there is five lecturers who need to deliver two lectures uh, in the whole of 40, 14 weeks. So we only... Uh, I don't know. We like we intend to putting the uh, cognitive domain only because a very limited time for us to teach. What are the CLOs? The CLOs is um, PLO, PLO1, PLO, PLO2, and PLO11, which is uh, knowledge, cognitive. Eh, sorry, sorry. Which one is um, eth ethics, professionalism, um, knowledge, and knowledge? Yeah. C1 and C2. So, the ethics one is effective. Lah. Effective. Active. Uh -huh. Yeah, ethics and professionalism should be under effective domain. Oh, cannot be under cognitive. No. Ah, it can have some cognitive component, but it should be, there should be more effective domain. I see. Okay. Thank you so much for the problem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Ah, uh, Yeah, anybody? No? Tiara? Kalau tiara, can we close ka, uh, Dr. Amir? Ashfi here, Prof. Um, okay, yeah. that's right. Okay. Yeah. Apa ni, uh, kalau tidak ada soalan lagi, kita maybe we can close the session lah kan, Prof? But please feel free to email me huh, if yeah. you have anything, if you do not comfortable to share here. Just email me, I will respond to your email. Yeah. It's, it's a bit difficult, difficult to, uh, for people to share this through uh, uh, learn, uh, online learning platform. But if you send me the uh, your, your question with your document, I, 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 will, I will respond to it. Yeah. Okay, okay back prof. to you. Uh, uh, Kaspi, yeah. Okay, Prof. Thank you very much. On yeah. behalf of uh, PPKA, uh, uh, kami ingin mengucapkan terima kasih lah, Prof, atas uh, sesi okay. hari ini, atas kesediaan Prof untuk menyampaikan sesi pad, uh, pada pagi ini. So sebelum kita close betul-betul kita punya session ni, uh, kita ambil gambar dulu boleh kan Prof? Minta mana-mana okay. oh, sesi yeah, partisipan untuk mohon maaf lah. Mohon maaf banyak gangguan hari ini. It's okay uh, Prof. It's such a technical. Uh, my grass cutter di luar bising. <laughs> That didn't you know, affected by affected me. <laughs> oh, terganggu. Okay Prof, yeah. mari kita buka kamera. Okay. Okay. Dia buka kamera. <coughs> okay. Jom-jom buka lagi kamera. Okay. 
Okay, ha. Okay, saya kira ya sampai 10 saya pengen buka kamera. Saya snap sejak ni senyum. Print screen. Okay. One, two, three. Sekejap. Right. Another one. Lagi. Sekali lagi. One, two, three. Smile. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Thank you semua. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. all right. Thanks. Take care. Bye. Okay, bye. Take care. Bye. Thank you so much, Prof. Bye bye. Thank you, Prof. Thank you so much.